Hello AQA and OCR students, it's wonderful to have you with me as we look at some tricky multiple choice questions, questions that require really strong use of formulas, equations, and conditions. Most important of all though, is that you've watched my prior video called Key Equations and Conditions. All of that material needs to be ingrained in your head so that you will find multiple choice so much easier. But also make sure you have watched all my videos on hard multiple choice questions so that you can ace these questions because you want to be aiming for full marks here. All of those videos are in my revision for paper three playlist. Go and check those out so that we can hit full marks. Then we're good to go. Let's dive into this video though. Question number one, calculating a weighted price index. Well, this question starts with a load of waffle. All this line is doing at the top is describing what the table is showing, but using our eyes, we can ignore this waffle. We can see that we have a table showing three different goods within a consumer basket. Their weighting is there and also their prices are there. The actual question is down here. We wanna highlight the key parts. So what was the percentage increase in the overall price index between April, 2021 and April 2022. So basically we're trying to work out an inflation rate from 2021 to 2022. And to do that, we need to calculate a weighted price index. From there, we can then go to our percent to change and work out the inflation rate. So you just need to know the process of how to do this. Um, here it is on the right hand side to calculate a weighted price index. First, you take each good, you multiply its price by its weight. So let's do that for all of these. So take good X, 0.1, times 102 gives you 10.2, uh, 0 0.4 times 104 gives you 41.6, and 0 0.5 times 103 gives you 51.5. Of course, you have the use of a calculator in your exam. Uh, of course, you're welcome to use that to do this, but these are the correct answers. So what we have here are the weighted prices of all of these different goods. Second thing you do, you add up these weighted prices. If you sum all of these three together, you get 103.3. So this is now the total weighted price of this basket. What we then do is divide by the total weights. Now in our situation, you add up the weights, you get to one. So there is no division to do. We're gonna end up with the same number, but in case the total number of weights isn't one, you need to go through this step, but we stick with 103.3. Now you do a percentage change. Well, from last year, uh, the index number was 100, that was the base year. We're now working with 103.3 as the percentage change. That's obviously 3.3% takes us to C. But in case they were more awkward numbers, use the percentage change equation. The difference between two numbers divide by the original times 100. In our situation, it's really easy working from 100. It's all about knowing the process, right, this question? So there you have it, really easy once you know the process. Now to this next question. All it requires is one equation, but for some reason, nobody ever seems to know what it is. So another question that starts with utter waffle. Again, we can see what the table is showing us because we have eyes, our eyes from which we can see things. The actual question is down below. What was the value of real GDP in 2019 to the nearest billion pounds? Okay, we need to work out real GDP in 2019. We need an equation for that. Here is the equation on the right. This will make your life so simple to calculate real GDP. You take nominal GDP, divide by the price index in that year, multiply by 100. In case you needed to work out real GDP per capita, same equation, just divide by the population, but in index form, and then multiply by 100. It's so simple. So in our situation here, you just slap these numbers into the equation and see what answer we get. So nominal GDP is 290 in 2019, divided by the price index, which is 110. We then multiply that by 100. Again, use your calculator to work this out, but this gives you 263.63. We need to work out the answer to the nearest billion pounds, which is 264 in this case. So simple, it's just the equation. Move on. See how easy that is? It's such a classic question, always comes up in multiple choice. If you watch my key equations and conditions video, you know that equation already. But regardless, we all know it now. We're all ready to go when it comes up again. Now this next question frequently comes up in multiple choice. It is a little bit tricky, it requires another key equation. So our third question in a row that starts with a load of waffle. How the examiner has not realized at this point that we have eyes. We can see things with our eyes. So again, we can see what the table is showing us 
the question is down below. This tax is an example of what type of system, what type of tax. We need to understand the average rate of tax to get to the heart of this question. As a word definition, all that is is the amount of tax paid as a proportion or percentage of total income earned. There is an equation to work it out. It's just the amount of tax paid divided by total income multiplied by 100. It's a percentage at the end which shows you the amount of tax paid as a proportion of total income earned. Once we get the concept of ART, the average rate of tax, we could then understand what these three different types of tax systems are all about. So a progressive tax is one where as income goes up, the average rate of tax also goes up. The amount of tax paid as a proportion of total income goes up. A proportional tax is one where as income rises, the amount of tax paid as a proportion of total income stays exactly the same. And a regressive tax, as someone earns more, the amount of tax paid as a proportion of total income goes down, the ART goes down. So now, understanding that, we can go to our different answers. Well, immediately, we need to look at A, because A is something different, a lump sum tax. All that is, is a fixed amount of tax paid regardless of income. So we can see that A is wrong for two reasons, because the amount of tax paid is not fixed, and this question is implying that the amount of tax paid is linked to income. So A is clearly wrong. It's not a lump sum tax. It's one of the three more traditional types of tax systems. Now, there are two ways you can go about getting the answer right here. For each type of income, for each amount of income, you can work out the ART and then see what trend you're seeing and work it out. That's fine, that's a more long-winded way. But if you're slightly more mathematically inclined, it's very comfortable to see what type of system this is just by looking at the numbers. So have a look at income. We can see that each time income is rising by 10,000 pounds, okay? But look at the rate of change of tax paid. Initially, tax paid is rising by 1,400. Then for the next 10,000 pounds worth of income, it's only rising by 1,000. Then it's only rising by 600. So what we're seeing is that as income is rising by the same amount, the same uh, 10,000 pound increase each time, the amount of tax paid each time is rising, but at a slower rate. So looking at that relationship, clearly the amount of tax paid as a proportion of total income will be decreasing. That takes us to this clearly being a regressive tax. If you're a little bit more mathematically inclined, you will just see that by looking at the numbers, looking at the change in the numbers. If you're not, like I say, just use the equation, work out the ART for all of these different types of incomes here, and you'll get to the same conclusion of regressive tax. Simple as that. Fantastic to have that knowledge in the bag. Now let's finish off with a question that is, let's be honest, quite tricky because it's a topic area that I know you guys don't like very much. This question is for AQA students only. AQA students, you normally get every year a question about a commercial bank's balance sheet. So let's get into it. Again, four out of four, we're starting with Waffle. Ignore all that nonsense. The question is down here. What is the value of this bank's total liquid assets? All right, it's important that you understand the formulation of a commercial bank's balance sheet. I've done that, written it for you on the side here. So a balance sheet's got two different size assets and liabilities. I've written down the assets in order of liquidity. So for example, most liquid asset cash, reserves at the Bank of England next, money at short call, this is any interbank lending, short-term and long-term investments, advances, they're just loans that are issued by a bank, and fixed assets. You need to know the technical jargon because often that's what you'll see in multiple choice questions. So they're all the assets in order of liquidity. And then liabilities, what the bank owes, so you have uh, customer deposits, short run, long run borrowing, and then two parts here that form the capital part of liabilities, liable to shareholders. So shareholder funds and retained profit. Very easy to know this. Uh, it might look a bit funky, but very, very simple. Once you know this, you just have to work out uh, the total liquid assets for a commercial bank. Now, what economists normally say is that the first four here are a bank's liquid assets. When you have to work out a liquidity ratio, these are the four that we use to calculate liquid assets, total liquid assets. So that's what we're looking for in this table. So let's go through one by one and see where we'll be counting that as a liquid asset. Well, cash is the most liquid asset. We're gonna be counting that. Share capital is a liability. Uh, loans or advances, as written here, we know are not liquid assets. Fixed, ass fixed assets are also not liquid assets. Long-term liabilities, liabilities. Investments, this one's dubious because we know short-term investments are liquid assets, but long-term investments aren't. So we don't really know where this one's going because they haven't told a short run or long run investment. So we'll come back to that. We'll see from our calculations whether we need to include this or not. 
Retained profit we know is a liability. Balances or reserves at the Bank of England, yes, that's one of our liquid assets. Deposits and other liabilities, obviously liabilities, and then other liquid assets. Well, they're telling us these are liquid assets. That might mean, for example, money at short call, interbank lending taking place. So we have three definites. If we add up our three definites, 45 plus 25 is 70 plus 30 is 100 billion pounds. That is one of the answers. But we are unsure about investments, whether to include it or not. If we add on investments, we get 150, which is not one of the answers here. So clearly what they're saying is that investments might include short term and long term, or maybe it's just long term. They're basically saying don't include it here. It's not one of the answers given to us. So the answer, therefore, is B, 100 billion pounds. Done. So there you have it, folks. Some tricky little multiple choice questions dissected for you. But as mentioned at the start, that key equations and conditions video really is everything for multiple choice. You must have watched that. And also check out all my other videos about hard multiple choice questions. Just seeing me dissect the questions, giving you guidance will help you no doubt. But thank you so much for watching this one. Stay tuned for more videos to come and make sure you watch all those prior ones. Can't wait to see you again in future videos. Thanks, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm.